Hello everyone, and welcome back to a war game, Red Dragon. We have a 2v2 for you guys today. I'm playing the same side as Shem45 against the Colonel, Trader Paul Pelosi, and Devil Spicy. And this was one hell of a tough game. I mean, honestly, one of the hardest games I think I've fought in a very long time. And I make a couple mistakes here, and make a couple successes here, that I think you guys will find very interesting. So, first off, I'm taking up a PH2 Tiger. This is my Eurocore deck. It's seen some revision. But, um, you know, I'm giving it a shot, seeing what we can do. And we did immediately have some artillery coming in from the Red 4 team. I don't know whose artillery that was, but it was decently well targeted. And, I mean, honestly, that's going right for that Humvee CP. Hits it, and if this thing was 5 strength instead of 10, that would be dead. So, an extra 10 points nearly saved that C CV. So, we actually lose one right off the bat. And losing that plus 2 is a big deal, because our opponents, I mean, it's 2v2. You have 2 command vehicles minimum at the start. They're going to get Charlie basically as a built-in cost of playing the game. But my Tiger did have some successes here, and this actually gave us a bit of an indication of what we're going to see. Double Spicy on this side in Golf and Bravo, so he stretched a little bit there. And then the Colonel is fighting over here in Foxtrot pretty much exclusively, so there's going to be a big knockdown dragout fight between him and Shem. And that fight was absolutely crazy. And if you guys want to do something absolutely crazy... In terms of helping me out, like, share, subscribe, and all that stuff. Lately, I've been having some copyright claims because I like to have the in-game music. It's fair use. I know it's fair use. They know it's fair use. But it still puts a 30-day damper on the video and basically is part of why you guys won't necessarily get notified all the time. It's particularly bad on the live gameplay, too, which I've been trying to do more of lately. So, all of that out of the way, we have two M1A2 Abrams that are shooting in here for Shem. And they're anchoring this side while we have a couple of T-72Ss. A little farther back for Pelosi, and one of the things that you'll notice, the KPZ T-72Ss are filling a different role here. The M1A2s are really good for direct fire, the T-72Ss are using their Sphere ATGMs to knock out some of the transports going up here from the riflemen before getting their main guns online. It's a very, very flexible usage. So in response to seeing that uh, Spicy was bringing in a couple of Jaguars and other things there, I'm pushing into Bravo. I'm always a little bit scared of an Alpha Rush on this map, on this side, because, well, I've done it, and I've had it done to me, and it's very, very, very upsetting. But when we saw that, okay, they were splitting a little bit here, and Spicy's covering a wide area, that said to me, okay, well, I should probably push, I can get my Commandos Para to get up here, I can get the Vabs moving forward, I can get the 2A4s, and then my intention was to go down and around the side on the left, because, unfortunately, Cluster has hit Shem's M1A2s, and actually hit him again right there, two in a row, and even with the smoke, that's really horrible, because they're panicked, their accuracy is going to be lower, they're nearly dead, which means that they're more prone to getting killed by something else, and the artillery has been relentless, so the rest of the supporting units here for Shem are very unhappy, to say the least. So my intention was, get stuff over here, and we're going to send it right down the pipe at Echo at the opportune moment, and the trick is figuring out what that is going to be. T-72, M2, Jaguars, 55 points each, and I was trying to get Panzergren, don't do this, it's not a good idea with Panzergren 90, the Panzerfaust 3 does not have enough range, and because of the crits, actually, one of, those, one of the Jaguars got detracked. And that means instead of both moving up here like I thought they were when I saw this um, tag moving, there's one farther back and able to shoot in the Panzergren 90 instead of being ambushed by them on the high ground, which was, you know, kind of what I was hoping for. T-72 asked back there also supporting, and frankly, I'm not even sure, I wasn't even sure at this point that I could get one, and it certainly hasn't paid off. 50 points for one of these... 55 points for each of those, and we just barely get it, but, I mean, I thought that would be a nice way of getting both of those tanks 100 points and getting the Panzergren down and into the woods. It was not. Not even close. But I have reservists, I have AMX 13 BTTs, we're pressuring in here, we're getting it forward and forward and forward, and we're going to try to retaliate for their hold in Gulf with a hold in Bravo, which I think reservists and, and in Eurocore generally might be a good thing uh, to do. So, LSTR spotted, I'm marking that as firing, and I do have my Cesar that will be shooting in there. LSTR that far forward are incredibly dangerous. They get those uh, anti-air missiles online, and, well, that's kind of all she wrote for supporting here. I mean, this Cobra really should be a little bit worried. Um, anyway, I can't even visually confirm there's no... Oh, jeez. Yeah, okay. So they moved up, they're actually shooting at the Cobra right now. One missile already shot, second missile... Yeah, they're firing forgets. They don't need to... Uh, to not be stunned in order to shoot in. So, that was a little bit rough, but um, this was actually kind of fun, kind of interesting. You don't see it every day. T-72 M Jaguar getting shot by a martyr. And because they were facing this side, Shem's US Marines on the top ground, 
my martyrs were able to get a couple of shots in, and then what happened is as soon as they turned, they became inefficient at that range. So we got some damage, and then I had to move closer to finish that tank off, which, I mean, again, not necessarily the best use here, but it did clear out that position, and that's sort of what I really cared about. One, two, three T-72Ss of various types, so both the Polish and the West German, and LSTR up here from Pelosi as well, and that was pretty scary. And now, finally, we've gotten things going on the left. A little bit more delayed than I would have liked. I was trying to help out over on the right side and kind of um, didn't do this as soon as I had wanted to. But now we're moving up, now we're moving forward. I have Legion, I have Commandos Para. I do need to heal these up. It's, um... I, I tend to struggle with that. It's like, keep things alive, heal them up, treat it, treat them like they're valuable, and then they'll make uh, good returns. And I often don't... I, I'd often rather buy replacements than buy resupply, which is not the right attitude. Uh, it's not the right way to do it. So, yeah, don't be like me. Don't run your last one or two men forward to fight in the, in the woods. They won't survive. Particularly with all the artillery that we've seen so far. I was actually kind of expecting to see MLRSs shooting in. So, the Gazelle's going off to spot, Amex-10, RCSBs, and RCs. These have since been removed from the deck because they really didn't add all that much to this bush. But, I don't know, I mean, they were kind of okay. 1-2, shawning 2 KTs here, which does of course spew all that damaged infantry out onto the ground. It is more than enough damage to kill each one individually, and, I mean, that's pretty nice. No complaints there, really. My biggest problem, so, yeah, Lazar coming in takes out some of my eyes, that's why I have the AMX-10 RC on the ground, and then my hope was to get the 2A4 up and into this section of woods. And, yeah, I don't have nearly enough anti-air, but this was a this was a hard fought game, as I said previously, and I was just trying to I was trying to make up for the fact that we lost golf by doing something unexpected. And sort of the train of thought was, well, if we're already losing in golf, if we're already struggling sort of in the game writ large, then I can either lose by not doing anything, or I can lose while trying to win. So the 2A4 sitting right there does get clustered, and that really sucked down to two. But uh, we were able to decap Charlie, so a little bit of revenge for that early decap on Hotel, we have now cleaned them out there as well, but I lose the 2A4, which is frankly more valuable than the command vehicle, and now I'm just trying to see, so I thought this might be a tank CV. It turns out it wasn't, it was just a tank that was brought up here to stop this push. But, I mean, we've, I think, accomplished largely what I was hoping for. We've taken the Colonel's attention away from Golf, even just for a little bit, and Shem is making good use of it. So he's got his Rifleman going forward, m 13 a 3s we're trying to retake this town with a little bit of supporting fire. I mean, nice reserve shoots in there, honestly. 15 point strength on those guys makes them really meaty and difficult to root out of those towns. And then I had attempted to secure the first part of the Charlie Town as well, but I didn't have enough stuff there. And these are hanging back just because my Commandos Para are still pretty injured, so... I don't know, I cleared out my own front line to do that, but let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. Was that worth it? Was that stupid? Was it, you know, somewhat in the middle? I'm not really sure. So, nice save there. Roland 3 did save my Tiger 2, and that also did tell me they can see him. I thought he was far enough back they wouldn't necessarily be able to see him, but we're going to be moving around, staying out of line of sight there if we can. And here's something. So I missed this during the game, but my, my uh, artillery piece was clustered. And that's kind of curious, because it had been a little while since it had fired. So if I was thinking, I would have noticed two things. I would have noticed, one, I wouldn't have expected them to be able to shoot that blind. The clustering looks pretty close together, so maybe that was a guided shot. Maybe there's something back here. And also that my command infantry popped out and weren't actually in one of those towns. So a second mistake for me on that end. We do find some CC here, and I got some nice rocket pods on the way, but unfortunately... That's going to be it for my Tiger, and also for the Roland 3, as I lose that to the uh, Colonel Seed Plane there, so I was kind of annoyed about that. But the reason why, uh, again, my Micro was not so great on the left was because this was going on as well. I'm trying to keep the Leclerc alive. I'm trying to get Reservists up and to clear this out because we need to make an impact in Golf, particularly now that Bravo is a little bit less secure than it was. This MI24P, by the way, I love these things. I didn't used to. And then... I, it was pointed out to me exactly how good those Molnia infrared missiles are. I mean, 2625 versus helicopters, 3150 versus planes, and 50% accuracy to boot. I mean, usually... So, I overlooked them because they only carry four ATGMs. But this is, I think, a really good multi-role helicopter. Frankly, potentially more cost-effective than some of the French Tigers. Uh, at least that's the luck that I've had with it. So, a nice push from Spicy here, getting my reserves out of the woods, getting some shots in, 
and just trying to clear me out of this forest and attack into Bravo yet again. Um, that's sort of what they need to do. I mean, they need that two-pointer to be not threatened, and it certainly was. But this is just... It was a brutal game, man. Brutal, brutal stuff. And Fox Milan's sort of failed their test there. I was hoping to get some side shots in the T-72S's. Wasn't really able to manage it. So I've turned this on to times 2 just for a bit, because... Uh, I don't know, I wanted to show off the, the push on the left-hand side to start, but then this was pretty scary, and it's a long replay, so we're just sort of... Well, we're taking a high angle, we're seeing what there is to see, and then, uh, and then we'll go in and slow things down when there's, well, actually, like this, much more to see. So M1A2 Abrams, my Leclerc is dead. It got clustered. So that Leclerc carcass is sitting up top here, very sad, right there. And uh, I think he actually did hurt the M1A2s as well. A little bit of cluster does land in, and this was a persistent problem for us all game. Um, the cluster planes that, for some reason, we couldn't really defend against. So my ally does have a Patriot, I have a Roland 3, we had some ASFs going up, but the bomber always gets through, as the uh, British were wont to say back in the day. And that certainly was true this game. So. If we look at it, we're still taking it plus two. We still have Charlie. They had capped Fox previously. I kind of expected to move the CV over. But I think what they were doing is spending the points on the ground, getting the push forward out of Charlie before they go back to recap it, which is nice, good, cautious play. If you bring in another command vehicle, it gets killed needlessly. Then, you know, what have you really accomplished other than spending another hundred plus of your own points? So, at this point, I wasn't really sure what to bring in, so I'm bringing in some special forces and Fuchs Balans, and the idea was I can get those in here, I can get more reservists, and just sort of establish a presence in Bravo while my ally sort of bides his time to retake golf. And, I don't know, in hindsight, in hindsight, I think maybe we should have kept pushing golf together, because there were a lot of heavy tanks over there, some ATGMs would have been nice. And then there was a command vehicle spotted moving into the forest and golf. So it's not always the safest play, but we're up 159 points to 40 right now. That won't necessarily stay true if we can't keep that zone contested. And so by not pushing here, we're allowing our opponents to consolidate their position, which I don't have to tell you guys, that's uh, sort of not ideal. So many planes and the Patriot was spotted for a brief second, which tells you that they do have seed. That's going to be something coming in... looks like Cluster is actually going after the Patriot. Yeah, not great. My KWS got a kill, I think. One of the Patriots does go down, and then the other one's turned on maybe in time to get a shot here. One shot, swing and a miss. Pretty upsetting, but having two Patriots does mean that they're down vetted, so of course they don't have the bonus accuracy from... Um, I think you can take one on a veteran, or two on trained, I want to say. Still, I was happy with the Fallschirmjäger here. We got a heavy tank that shouldn't have really been moving that way, uh, as he was. I mean, side armor presented to up top here is a nice way to get get shot. But you can see now my reservists are arriving. My Fallschirmjäger probably pushed up a little bit too quick. I uh, should have waited for these reserve shoots in to get... Well, reservists, not reserve shoots in, to get up there. Um, we're doing okay. It's fine. I mean, we're going to be pulling back here, I think, in just a minute. I'm trying to do a little bit better with keeping these guys alive, but frankly the mortar response was very quick, very effective, and I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to pull back because as long as we're in the open ground, I mean, the Mi-24P is even shooting in, which I guess my one complaint about that helicopter in general is no rocket pods, because if he had rocket pods, my Fallschirmjäger would be dead. No ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, what was interesting too is that the Colonel had switched over by now, so they pushed into golf as much as they needed, they capped golf, they have some stuff sitting here. Yeah, we're going to do something about the C-72S. And then he switches over and he's willing to play the whole field. And he wants to push up in here to get into Alpha, to clear me out of these woods. And frankly, without Shem's US Marines and the LVTP 7A1, I'm not sure I would have been able to hold. So uh, this is pretty nice. The frag rounds are going to be just absolutely demolishing moat shoots in, in the open ground. It's what they're meant to do. And um, my Fallschirmjäger have been mostly ground through, so the US Marines 90 there from Shem are sort of all we have left. Tornado ECR going in, we find a uh, Flatcom Osa and actually take it out with a Conker's team. So this is a nice thing you can do. Higher level players will often um, turn off their radar AA, turn it back on once the plane started turning. But the light riflemen were able to use the fact that it was still turned on and still spotted, even if it can't be shot at by the seed plane, to get a couple of nice shots in. Still, this is a problem, Salamandra, T-72M1, T-72S. Salamandra does go down to a Chaparral, and now we're finally starting to get a couple of cost-effective engagements. The question is, will it be enough with our opponents up at a plus two? And 
I had expected us to be able to push this back a little faster than we did. I think maybe the 7A1 was focusing on transports instead of on the uh, infantry before, but now that's pretty nice, and we've overstayed our welcome. So, bombers coming in again. I lost my Roland to the seed plane uh, again, which was kind of annoying. And the KWS able to get another kill, but it's not enough. The air presence has just been truly terrifying, and down goes my ally's Tomcat, which was about the worst time for that to happen, I think. Uh, not really all that much worse opportunities for that to happen. So this was pretty nice. Uh, Mi-24D versus Commando's Para, of course the autocannon, oh, well not, not autocannon, the Yak Bees do pretty crazy damage, and I'm marking defense here because I don't have stuff set up. I don't have ATGMs back in hotel, I don't have really any way of shutting down those T-72Ss, and if they come into the side, you know, we're pretty toast. I mean, the amount of pressure this game was just, it was relentless, it was, it was just really scary um, the whole time. I was, I was playing just on the edge of my seat, sort of, okay, well, we're not giving up. We're not giving up, but is there anything we can do? And at the time, wasn't really sure. But M1A2 Abrams and an M2A2 Bradley are able to get some nice work here, and that's an expensive mistake. 225 point takes taken out very nicely by Shem up on the high ground, and this plateau usually seems pretty hard to push. A lot of people will put some fire support threaded throughout here, shooting out. I do that when I play Dutch. I'll take their uh, 50 point YPRs and just put a couple of them up around here, and that auto cannons anything that comes up the top. And the nice thing, too, is if you have an auto cannon here and you shoot in, and they're facing you, then an auto cannon here can get a side shot and vice versa. If they come up and they face this one, then they're presenting side armor to the one on the back. So it, it tends to be pretty smooth. Not always, but, but sometimes. So my reservists were just going up to see if there was still any LSTR or other sort of infantry in that section of golf. Also to look for a command vehicle, because at the time, I had completely forgotten that we saw one go into the woods. So I was trying to just see, you know, did they cap here and think, well, they'll never expect this with some command infantry or something that's a little bit harder to spot. In the meantime, because of the moat shoots and still moving forward, my commandos para and the vabs are going to be shooting in, and I'm bringing up a tiger hat. So, a bit of a questionable decision. I've been told before that, um, like a lot of people, I think helicopter tabs and plane tabs are a bit of a crutch, and I'm certainly not immune from that. In fact, I think it tends to be a bit of a problem. Unfortunately, recon tank killed around there, but we do get a nice peace rhine, and down goes another expensive tank, which I think was the only thing keeping us in the game, frankly, was the number of expensive tanks we were able to take out. But it, it did also show, yeah, there are no LSTR over here, because they're even farther forward. Oh, so upset by that. Just truly so upset by that. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Needless to say, I'm still learning Eurocore and still learning this game, actually. I have been playing a little bit more ranked, and some of those will go up uh, soon. And many thanks to Quicksilver for coaching me a little bit, as well as potentially balanced later on. Um, I think he did offer, and I am more than happy to um, to learn. So, uh, whether that's through <laughs> hard lessons or cooperation, either one works just well enough for me. So, this was another mistake. I'm getting my KWS. I've had it with this MI-24P, and at the time, I just kind of saw red. I was like, you know what? I want this guy dead. I want him gone, and I lose my KWS needlessly. It was never really going to reach the MI-24P, and I should have known better. And I feel like so much of this game is finding the moments where you should have known better, and then making sure that you don't actually do the thing that you know you shouldn't do, which... It's a weird statement, because you think if you know you, if you know you shouldn't do it, then you won't, right? Well, sometimes not so much. However, Commando's Para up around the side was pretty nice until those BMP-1s got their Groms online, and I was really hoping for um, probably a little bit better result there than I eventually got. It was okay, but I was I was hoping to get down and through a bit more than I actually did. In the meantime, Humvee CP barely staying alive, actually did get ambushed by some Red 4 infantry there, and we have to bring up more, more reinforcements and push through the woods again, which I think that is basically our opponent's plan at this point. Keep us mired down in one spot, and then, you know, maintain control of the board, because we can fight even at an advantage here for another 18 minutes. It's not going to save us the game we need to get a positional advantage that we don't currently have. So, uh, also by the way, fire and a Fuchs Fufu, bad combination, it actually kept decapping Alpha over and over and over again, uh, then recapping as the fire spread through the woods, which, one, hilarious, two, nice fire spread ability, honestly, it's, it's pretty nice. But this time we have Legion, we have Vabs right behind them, my martyrs are getting a little bit overexcited here, I'm trying to uh, get better at keeping the vehicles 
behind the infantry, and this is all too clustered up to begin with as well. So if there was an artillery strike, if there was a bomber, I would be a very, very sad man. And all I'm trying to do, I mean, yeah, the Vabs got out ahead, and here comes that mortar fire. So everything here is getting shaken and panicked basically at once because it's all too bunched up. But I'm not really sure how else I should have handled this situation. So if you have suggestions on, on how to have done this clear out, trying to get local force superiority without allowing it to be such a such a clump that I get hit. Um, I'd be happy to hear it because I really just uh, just don't really know. By the way, Ontos is in action, a rare sight, but um, you know, a good sight. And we do get another nice kill off the Peace Rhine. Unfortunately, it's going to be our last one for the game. Martyr 2s, by the way, I was happy that they didn't die because they're now fending off BMP 1s. And this is what they are really good at doing, even though it, it does cost me one of them. I don't think it would have if they weren't panicked. So, um, trying to make sure I keep those infantry fighting vehicles alive a little bit better. They're very, very expensive, um, and you can't really afford to do that. So, Nighthawk goes down, and I'm not sure if we decapped Golf or just scared them, but certainly one of those two, because we have a bit of breathing room now again. And you can see our early lead is gone. It was 150 to something like 60-ish. Now they have nearly double our points. And, uh... You know, that's not a really good way to win a game of Conquest. <laughs> Generally, you want to have more points than your opponent, not the other way around. Just my own recommendation, I know. Pro gamer strategy is there. When you're trying to play a game, you should try to focus on winning it. <laughs> uh, but this was pretty nice. The Legion 90 going forward, I know that they're spotted, but they were getting a response, and the Colonel here is moving some stuff out while trying to get a T-72 over. I wasn't sure if that was to do direct fire or not, because it is a little bit risky. And I do also have another Leclerc. We're going to be able to shoot in and hopefully get some good damage in 18 frontal armor as opposed to a 22 AP powered gun. So I was hoping for a good result. I needed to have been smoking here already though, uh, but I don't think I had a mortar. Yeah, so I was relying on my allies' mortar for that Leclerc, and this is not something I should have taken for granted because here comes one cluster bomb bomber again, and there's a uh, ATGM plane behind it, and there's a dead Leclerc. So. My super heavies do not tend to do as well as they need to. Um, yeah, nothing really else to be said for that other than trying to do better, but it can be rough sometimes. I mean, the constancy of, of smoke that you need is just, it's, it's a micro stress and it's one that you have to sort of accept or not use those tanks. But if you're, if you're not using those tanks, then you're cutting yourself out from options that are sometimes necessary in order to really retake positions, particularly in the open field. So this was pretty nice. The uh, rocket pods on the had stunning that Jaguar, exposing his side armor. Then actually the rocket pods got the kill, not the ATGM. Then we had a bit of a combined push. So Shem and I were talking and um, he basically just said, okay, well, well, we both sort of, I don't know. It was a combined effort. I'm not really sure how it materialized, but once again, my vehicles get too far ahead and get taken out. So yeah, not not really great. But uh, we have US Marines in, we have Legion in, Panzergren 90, and Bravo is starting to become a little bit more porous, and I think that was in part because every 100 point tank that we were able to hunt is another investment that our opponents needed to put into replacing it instead of really filling out everything across the entire map. In other words, we were able to get some modicum of success on the ground and use it in a different part of the field. So we got good kills here, we use it to push over here, and the idea is to one, split our opponent's focus, two, make them feel like they're being pushed back on all fronts, and, I mean, push them back on all fronts if we can, and then three, to reclaim just enough ground to stop the bleed, because we're still losing at a plus one, and that will change if we can decap Bravo, if we can cap it ourselves, we'll even flip up to a plus one again. There's still 12 minutes left in this game, uh, potentially, only nine minutes left in the replay, and I am not willing to, uh, to call it a game just yet. We'll see if that changes, it might, but, um, not really sure. So, two Tiger Hads running away from that Mi-24P, such a powerful helicopter, and one that I haven't really been able to touch. And then I think this is the, it's the Colonel figuring out whether or not I have anti-air. And he's killed so much of it, honestly, so much of it has gone. Um, but I really couldn't let that fly. So the Tornado ECR has some probably rarely used AIM-9L missiles, and I figured he has four strength, I need to hit one. We did get it, and we're gonna get it out before those MiGs are able to respond. So. Um, nice attempt there, but, I mean, it's the other side of the map, and I was curving to the left uh, as well, so... I was pretty happy with that. Now, Panzergren, Legion, Legion 90, moving up into the forest in Charlie, and I had a, about this time... 
But you know, I'm not going to ruin it. I, I think there's a there's a plot twist at the end of the game here where, um, yeah, well, well, we'll just see when we get there. So, quad stack of T72Ss from the Colonel, and I think this is probably not what, what most people would consider standard ranked play type things. I think he was just sort of dunking on us a little bit because, I mean, let's be honest here, we, he's basically had success wherever he's pushed. Um, this game and and just having all four of them with simple smoke micro and he's he's basically making a statement i think of yeah you can't do anything about this so i'm gonna do this because you can't do anything about it and just deal with it <laughs> so kind of annoying um but i mean he was right so these guys do have now four atgms are able to fire it's more than enough to make this hc abrams just say yeah i mean individually i could win that fight but 4v1 no not even gonna try uh, but we are going to get some good contacts here, Legion 90 able to smack one of them, actually two of them. But we run into the problem of grouped units firing at grouped units split their fire. So we actually hit two different tanks with those uh, with those AT weapons, and if that hadn't been a stun, I think my allies HC Abrams would have been able to get another. Because he got one, two of them are very nearly dead, and a second shot with the AP power on that HC, 22 AP, I think, I think it would have done nice things. I think it was um, definitely a good idea. Well, okay, I mean, yeah, again, he hit the one that was strongest, <laughs> as opposed to one that would have been more easy to kill. So, I don't know if it's a secret, keep your uh, heavy, expensive tanks clumped up strategy, but it certainly got the better of us. T-72 M1 mod over here as well, so just heavy tank galore. Ardrek is going to be looking for that. I'm not really sure we'll get too, too much success there in the MiGs, Three of them now do crumple that entire side. So with that, and with the T-72s able to spot and take out the command vehicle in Gulf, things were looking a little bit grim. But we are still taking out a plus one, so as I said, we were able to decap Bravo, we were able to cap Bravo ourselves. This is still hesitantly a good engagement, that Lazar is about to change that, but I mean, we should be able to get some fire on him in return. One shot, one hit, and that's a dead plane. My Tiger had actually survived, so... Helicopter hunters don't always get success, and when they don't, it can really, really throw off the, um, the intended balance on one side of the field. So, if we can recap golf, that's nice, we'll get to a plus two. We're only about 120 points behind, which at a plus one is too much. We need to probably have a plus three for a little bit here. I don't really feel like doing the math at the top of my head while recording and commentating, but that was sort of the goal. That's why we had capped Foxtrot, well, counter-capped it for so long anyway. Um, even in the space, in the in the face of those heavy tanks, was if we could get golf, if we could counter cap Fox, that's the plus three that was just sort of necessary at this point. By the way, nice reserve shoots and push from the Colonel here. He he knows um, what'll sort of tear us apart, and this certainly was it because we don't really have. It's a distraction for everything on this side of the field. It also tells us, hey, these guys are living for a while. Our uh, his opponents might not have enough to really take it out that well, and it's an opportunity. Tiger had, meanwhile, taken some fire, but I wanted to get those speech gel out of clutter and deny them that uh, close-in recon. Make them buy another one, bring it up, and potentially... Well, that's the one that had spotted my command vehicle over here, so I was kind of mad. <laughs> uh, so, at this point, my ally did surrender, but I was not ready to give up yet. So, at this point, everything in my deck, the availability doubles, and my income doubles, and... If you've ever been 2v1 or 3v1 or something like that before, you'll, you'll probably know that can be a powerful tool. So, yeah, you don't have as much micro, but the ability to bring out concentrated reinforcements in one position is pretty nice. And if you use it correctly, it can really do a lot of unexpected things. And now, those of you who are a bit more eagle-eyed might have spotted it. I have command infantry up here with their guns off. And I was looking at the game, I was looking at the points... And I kind of thought to myself, okay, well, with these T-72s over here, with all this over on the right-hand side, my best chance is going to be to counter-cap right here in the woods. So that's why my U.S. Marines, well, now my U.S. Marines, that's why everything on this side is pushing up as aggressively as it is. I needed to clear this section of forest, to maybe even clear that section of town if I could, and get enough breathing room to get into a plus three for even just a little bit of time. There's still seven minutes left possible, 275 to 362, and closing the gap, but every single second's also making it harder and harder for me to have a chance here, because I mean, even a plus three can't solve that gap immediately. So, Tiger's coming out, we see more quick VABs coming out with Legion 90, just the impactful infantry that I needed in fast transports to get them up there in time. That was the goal, we'll see, uh, it's the 
old strategy cotton. We'll see how well it works out for him. But um, in addition, I kind of took everything I gotten from Shem and just threw it out the wall. So I made AGSs, HA Abrams, pretty nice combination, honestly. 17 AP power, 13 rounds a minute. And then the heavy armor of the HA Abrams to anchor here. Needed to spread them out a bit more, but honestly, my micro was stressed beforehand. Now it sort of got even worse. And the tornado ECR going down. I mean, being handed your opponent's stuff is nice until you realize, well, I don't know where anything is. I don't know what anything is uh, before that moment in time. So my command infantry are going forward. The Legion 90 going forward. M1A2 Abrams just making a bit of a statement here. I fully expected him to die. But I was hoping he might be able to sort of screen things out just for a bit, get a couple shots in just for a bit, and hopefully a bit would be enough. I mean, I need to scare both of the Red 4 players out of this position, even just for, for two minutes here. So, Chaparral, M8 AGSs, I mean, sparring with those three super heavy tanks and doing pretty well here. So, the HA Abrams is, of course, the main punch, but look at that. I mean, they're pretty far down, they're worried, they're not getting all their shots in as they need. And one of them goes down. I mean, that right there could trade for both the M8s, and that's a good trade. The question is if we can get a second one, and it looks like just barely the answer might be no, because the HA Abrams... Oh, yep, there it is. Nice. Hey, that paid for itself. Good combination, I guess. So, uh, Charlie is counter -capped. My VAMs are just arriving, and those Legion 90 are, are going to try to shoot the gap here without any smoke and get into that section of town. At least one of them, I think, will be. The other ones are just trying to hold at the ridge line. Of course, they do have relatively long-range Eryx uh, anti-tank weapons. 25 AP, decent range, kind of like the Boombar, I think, is uh, the Red 4 version of it. And this was a bit of a mistake. So my LSTR get taken out. I was trying to go after that last tank. I forgot that we'd seen LSTR everywhere the entire game. And now we do have Legion 90 going up into the woods. M1A2 still over here. Surprised he was still alive, but I think we have finally taken a toll on the Red 4 team's plane options. So you can see some Hawk 51s. Coming over here, some bombers, they're looking for something, and I'm not really sure what, but I know that I don't like it at that time. And then the Legion are in the town, so Legion here taking out Naito uh, 86M, more Legion going up the center, maybe even able to intercept those Panzer Yekri with some Vabs in the open ground, but we lose Delta. And um, yeah, as it turns out, there was a recon team that had gotten back in here relatively early, it's how they got my, uh, it's how they got my artillery, even. And they used it to decap Delta, and I'm sitting there going, well, shucks. So that combined with the Hawks, uh, Spicy here is looking to just command vehicle hunt. And I did move the CV out ahead, had heading up to Golf, back to Delta, just because I did still want to be able to call some things in with three minutes left. We take down the Red 4 command vehicle here, and I couldn't have even hoped for that. That was better than anything I'd ever really wanted. We flip it to a plus four with three minutes left, finally overtaking the Red 4 team once more. 381 points to 362 and counting. I was so happy, so, so happy uh, to see that. I was sitting there going, no way, no way did this work. And it just worked just in time. Prompting a surrender from the Colonel, and then promptly a surrender from Double Spicy as well. That was a win. <laughs> oh man, I like five minutes into that game, I was expecting a loss, and it turned around in the last couple of seconds. I was so happy. Oh, of course, KD was not nice. I was down about a thousand points, my ally only down around 200 or so, so he did play a bit of a tighter game. But we had more problems with position on that side of the board too, so I mean, it's sort of one of those destruction versus conquest type deals. And then, as far as star players go, my Tigers did alright. The Martyr 2s did some pretty excellent work. This one was the one that killed the T-72M Jaguar. Pretty happy with that. And then Legion 90 will always tend to perform well, along with Commando's Para. And uh, this is that push that we had around the left in the beginning part of the game, taking out BTR 50 YVIs. That was, of course, the Finnish command vehicle in their two-pointer. Got us the breathing room that we needed to not have already lost the game by the time we eventually rallied at the end. Other than that, Tiger had did very well, Legion, and uh, that's going to be all we've got for you guys today, so thank you all for hanging around. We'll see you again real soon.